Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into Border City Rock Talk. We get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit the notification bell, hit that like icon, and hit the subscribe button so you get notified when I have these great <laughs> interviews. Today I've got, well, everybody knows Paul Shortino of what? Let's say this is Spinal Tap, Rough Cut, King Cobra, uh, and the list goes on and on. How are you doing, Paul? I'm doing great. It's good to see you, Ernest. Thanks, man. Um, I want to talk about a couple of things before we get into the Spinal Tap stuff, guys. Stick around for the Spinal Tap information. But um, you just released "We Are Warriors." Um, how how is the how is that going right now? Actually, it was uh, I heard August. it was fifty eight fifty eight on uh, Amazon as sales. Uh, it's also been released on vinyl. So there's a twelve inch out there with ten songs on it, and the CD has twelve songs on it. And uh, the video is on YouTube. We are Warriors, King Cobra with a K. Cobra on the K part. But uh, it's uh, the song is We Are Warriors is basically about us partying and uh, on the Sunset Strip during the 80s time and everybody trying to, you know, do their best to, you know, get noticed and actually uh, get a record deal. So I did some tongue and cheek stuff with it, you know. There's a there's a verse in there where, you know, hey, meet me down at the strip, you know, and everything's going. That's where everything's happening, you know. Come feel the noise and bang your head. We're gonna rock tonight and wake the dead, you know. You're gonna yeah. go meet me at the whiskey. There's lines in there, you know, where we check out the bands. There's movie stars and girls with hot legs. I used hot legs in there. Because Carmine uh, was involved in the writing of that with Rod Stewart in If You Think I'm Sexy. So, right. Which I did a video with Carmine and a guy named Javier Vargas uh, in 2000. I think it was probably seven or something like that. And um, we redid like uh, a version of If You Think I'm Sexy. It's, it's, it's out there on YouTube with uh, Javier Vargas. But, uh, it's it's awesome playing, doing stuff with Carmine because he's a legend, you know. So to do, and King Carbo's his band. So I reached out to Carlos Cabazzo because uh, Mick Sweda and um, David uh, Phillips Henserling. The, Mick is back in um, Bullet Boys. Well, I think he was, and... And David just didn't want to do rock and roll anymore. So I reached out to Carlos and, and then I reached out to uh, Rowan Robertson and we did this record. It was a trip how we did it. Everybody sent me their files and pretty much I get files. We click, we did, recorded everything to a click and then we sent those ideas to Carmine. Carmine retracted the tracks to a click but he doesn't play on the click. He plays like behind it a little bit. He plays around it. So we all ended up having to re-record, re-record to his drum tracks to give it more of a live feeling because we all had tracked these ideas and songs to a click. Rowan had a studio, but he actually came to my house because he lives in Las Vegas. And we uh, recorded some of them songs here. I ended up producing it and sharing production with Pat Reagan, who mixed the record. Mm -hmm. And uh, it took us about a year and a half to do. Um, and before that, uh, before this record, I had did a Rough Cut 3 album with just Amir and Matt Thorne, the first one in 30 years. And uh, we released that on a small label called DDR Music Group. And people can go to ddrmusicgroup.com and and check out some of the products that they have there. Also released uh, two other albums during COVID. Uh, one with uh, Tracy G from Dio, the right, guitar right. player. And that record is kind of like uh, we did a remake of You Don't Have to Say You Love Me Just Because of the Grands. You know, uh, the Dusty mm -hmm. Springfield thing. But he played the guitar. So it's the album's kind of like Gary Moore meets Zeppelin. Oh, it's some really cool stuff with a little bit of Black Sabbath vibe in there. Uh, 
that record was that was a lot of fun to do uh with him during covid and then um i found some tracks for bad boys in the right. same right. label uh ddr music uh group said hey uh do you have any other stuff we can release so uh, why uh while we're releasing these other tracks, these other songs. So those, those CDs are available to, uh, from that company. Some really good stuff. It was, I'll put uh, some uh, links below for that, Paul. And uh, is it fair to say you were the busiest cat during COVID? <laughs> I tried to keep myself busy. Uh, actually, just after we finished the King Cobra record, Michael Voss, who uh, produces uh, Michael Shanker's albums and is the second guitar player, with him um sent me a bunch of ideas and we started working on them and i got carmine in, interested and in phil susan so we were actually recorded another album that's just sitting around uh i don't know what we're going to call it i suggested that we call it vass voss a piece susan and shortino you know our last names right, right. Uh, but it's uh th that's some really cool stuff it goes um, who knows who's going to release it? Voss has all of it, and he's mixed it, and uh, and you know, then he's he's doing the Michael Shanker thing right now. So uh, all the tracks are finished, and he he put it out there to see if somebody'd be interested, calling it Project One Voss. But it initially was going to be a, a solo record with me and him because I I did a record with him prior to this in covid uh called chasing your dreams and um we have a good relationship he's a he's a great songwriter in fact i married him during uh i released an album called make a wish on ward records just before covid hit right and we did a, a video of sending the clowns and Vinny paul abbott's playing on the drums on that because we recorded it in 2010 and then we re-recorded it with uh, Michael uh, uh, Marco Mendoza on bass, and it was released in a Japanese label. But we uh, did a remake of "Send in the Clowns" and Carrot Tops in it, <laughs> and he plays the clown. It's on YouTube, and we did another song. We titled the album "Make a Wish." It was released April twenty fourth, and then COVID hit. <laughs> Oh, there you go, you know. Yeah. So that record just kind of got lost. But if anybody really wants to check out a cool video, send. we have the lighting people that do all the Cirque stuff. And we re, we videoed this with Cirque, Cirque Soleil lighting and uh, Gary Arona, who's done a lot of horror films and stuff for HBO and, and Cinemax. His wife, Tabitha Stevens, uh, played a, a female clown in Carrot Top. Play. It's it's an amazing video. There's just very there's some uh, still shots of Benny Paul playing the drums, mm -hmm. and it's uh, we actually put at the end of the video uh, in memory of Benny Paul. Yeah, because we had recorded this and we were trying to do a thing like the Rockers did with Sam Kennison. Right. We're sending the clowns. Yeah. Yep. So we started sending the clowns like Frank Sinatra. Isn't it rich? Are we up there with the orchestra? And then he goes, ah! And Benny Paul goes, I got the opening drum fill. And I'm yeah. going, yeah, well, what about the bridge and the rest of the song? He says, well, I got the opening drum fill. So we actually, <laughs> when we cut this song with Ira Black and a guy, a bass player, he was just a kid, a 19-year-old, Tyler uh burgess we uh cut it at uh studio here in las vegas and we cut it in sections and benny paul showed up late uh w dressed up like a clown and all and brought all of his posse with him and some clown you can see there's some clown uh, dolls in the video of him of him shooting but i found out later i thought we had video footage of him doing it but uh Actually, Bry Dog, uh, who is in control of the uh, Abbott estate, actually videoed some stuff, and I didn't know that when we put the video together. So wow. we did another uh, song called Ma uh, Make a Wish that's on YouTube, and there was a, uh, 
uh, magician here and comedian, um, uh, Murray Salchuk. He was on America's Got Talent and he actually did some magic to some of the lyrics to the song. And we used some of the same lighting. We did the video at Desert Moon, which is Danny Coker mm -hmm. from Counting Cars Studio. Right. And uh, it's all black. It's really cool. You have to check out the video of Sending the Clowns. I'm gonna so that record just kind of, you know, went un, uh, you know, unnoticed because of COVID. And yeah. the video came out. It did, you know, it did well on some hits, you know, gonna, but. I'm going to put the link below for uh, Sending the Clowns. And you can't have a rock metal interview without Carrot Top, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the uh, King Cobra. Have a good time. Uh, actually, we're going to go out and do some shows. We're doing uh, February 16th at Vamp here in Las Vegas. And I think it's the 17th or I think it might be the 18th of February at the Whiskey and more dates to come. I'm also doing in April Rock Meets Classic right. with uh, a rock band with an orchestra. Right. Dee yeah. Snyder just did it with uh, Joey Tempest. Oh, I'm doing it. Yes. He did that doing, in Europe. Joey yeah. Tempest. And it's going to be in Germany. Okay. We're doing like 10 dates, maybe more. Uh, and it's with some of the guys from Super Tramp, Manford Band. It was going to have Scott Gorham and one of the other guys from Thin Lizzy. But I think they're still negotiating on that. I just signed contracts on it and, uh, that should be something really interesting. I'm doing three songs. One song from The Quiet Riot that I was on the album with, Carlos and Frankie, um, Stay With Me Tonight. And then mm -hmm. um, and then two other songs that made, you know, Quiet Riot very famous, the Slade song, Come On, Feel The Noise. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Metal Health. Uh, so it should be really, uh, really cool to do it with an orchestra. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Um, just give me a second. I said, Jive Ho! I'm teaching a guy named Scully how to uh, sail here, Paul, so sorry about that. I can see the waves behind you, man. It's yeah, a... There's a no, uh, <laughs> the, um, Some know, people get seasick. I love it. I love being oh, out in the ocean. Oh, I'm used to it. I mean, this is, uh, this is what I do. I'm just uh, enjoying. Just make sure I don't hit anything behind me. If you see a rock, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> Let's talk about some Spinal Tap, man. Um, Spinal Tap 2 is coming out. I originally saw something on um, social media, and I thought, okay, maybe not. I, could, I couldn't find anything, but it, it is fact. Spinal 2 is coming back out with yeah. Christopher Guest, uh, Michael McKeon, and, and, and our good friend Harry Shearer, which you were also in that movie as Duke Fame. Um, the premise, from what I understand, is kind of like, the way things kind of can get when you get big and famous as Spinal Tap did. Uh, they come back for like a reunion show or something and they're all traveling in separate buses. What, what do you know about that? And Well, uh, what I know is, is that they all need money so they get back together and they hate each other. And that's what I've heard through the grapevine. And it makes sense to do that. And they'll all be traveling separately. And they'll show up to the gigs, but they actually supposedly hate each other. And and what's interesting is that Paul Schaefer had a show up here in Las Vegas before COVID, of course, uh, at uh, Caesars. Yeah. And um, so one night, Harry Shear showed up. So I showed up. And it was a spinal tap moment for me because I ha I was the only bass player. We did big bottoms, my yeah, girls got them. Watch that video. All, it's on all, YouTube. all bass guitar players. So we had uh, uh, Paul Schaefer, who was Artie Funkin, right? Mm -hmm. And then we had um, uh, Eric Schmoles, which is uh, Harry Shear, and Duke Fame, all on the same stage. And actually, um, Billy Huffy, what, when he was alive, the base, uh, actually the bass player from uh, Desi, Billy, and uh, Dino, Desi, and Billy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, from the '60s, they had an album out. It was Dean Martin's son and Desi Arnaz and Billy Henshee, and um, so there were a few other people that were 
playing bass and I don't remember everybody that was there, but it was a moment that I'll never forget because we all had to do a bass solo. So I had a big Taylor acoustic bass and it was playing just fine through the whole song. When it was my turn to do a solo, it went dead. So they put a mic up to the hole in the bass and I got to do my solo. So I was do, 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 on this big freaking bodied bass, you know, and like a mariachi almost, you know, the bass was so large, but they had to put a mic up to it. And I go, wow, oh, this is a spinal tap moment. And it's been that way ever since I've been in the movie. When we were out in the road, rough cut and warming up for Crocus and Except, mm -hmm. when the movie just first came out, we couldn't get a line check. And that's when the movie was in all of the Holiday Inns and all the Howard Johnsons and on people's tour buses when the movie first came out. <laughs> Lo and behold, the, the road manager from Crocus, who was headlining, said, hey, are you Duke Fame? And I went, uh, yeah, I'm Duke Fame. And spinal tap yeah and so he says well the guys in the band want to meet you so i went down and i got to meet the uh, starachi and and everybody in the band and uh actually through the years i kind of stayed friends with the drummer who was in the band at the time mm -hmm. and um but it was kind of cool and then from then we from that point on we actually got a line check even you know <laughs> it wasn't much of much room on a stage because uh, when you've got three bands and you got a line check, you are right up on the monitors. So you really don't have monitors. <laughs> they're either so low you can't hear them or they're shooting so far over your head because you're right on them. Right. You know? And then you move your shit in the next band and then Crocus and stuff never was touched and Accept. And then we went out with Accept later. But um, that movie is actually, I have uh, I ran into... Uh, REO Speedwagon at the airport and I was picking up the DOs with the limo driver just to help with the luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the road manager from REO said, are you Duke fame? And I said, yeah. He says, well, Kevin and the guys want to meet you. <laughs> and I've known Dave Amato for over 20 some years, but this is, this was actually before Dave Amato was in the band. It was the uh, first guitar player. Right, and it was kind of cool, just you know that it that uh, you know such a small part. You know, I I got the part by showing up with the white leather. That was my outfit, and uh, they ran an ad in the paper, and casting came to the True Border to see us and invited me, Jake Williams, who was in the band Rough Cut at the time, and the drummer Dave Alford. And I showed up first. I think it was uh, a Denny's on Lancashire and Sherman Way. Yeah, and, I think uh, you told me that before. Yeah, I think that I think it was or Norms, one of those. And uh, <laughs> you know, they went, "Well, this is Duke Fame. He's <laughs> he's dressed for the part. We don't even have to dress him." You so, think you got uh, recognized you know, more as Duke Fame because that movie is so friggin' iconic? I've watched it about fifty times. Everybody, uh, I, I do it. get. You know, people come up to me on that. You know, I get I get the Paul Stanley all the time. Uh, it's funny, me and Robin McCauley, when we were working together and raiding the Rock Vault, he would get Alice Cooper and uh, and uh, Howard Stern. And I, I, I got Howard Stern a couple times. Gene Simmons. Yeah. I'm too short. I tell people I'm to be Jimmy, Gene Simmons. It's, well, I guess no, it, has something, boots, it has though. something to do with the hair. Maybe. You know? Uh, sometimes and you know some people they you know that aren't in the rock things they know oh wow this guy you know the way he's dressed or the way he looks he has to be somebody maybe he's gene simmons or you know they're they're just trying to figure out if we go out to dinner somewhere they're trying to figure out some people even come up and go hey can I take a picture with you? Because I know you're somebody. And I went, <laughs> okay, <laughs> whatever. You Tell know. them to pick up the check too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and I'll sign it for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, please. Here's Once the, the check. check. I'll, I'll, sign, I'll sign the back of your check and you can sign the front of mine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Get that in the Spinal Tap 2 movie because I understand... Um, You've got um, your manager is 
is is in touch with them and we're not going to say that uh, you're in the movie but we're going to say that uh, you're in I'm tr um, I'm I'm trying to actually I've got some people that are agents that are trying to actually get in contact with them I was actually thinking about reaching out to um Rob Reiner and uh, through the Screen Actors Guild because I'm in, in uh, actually in that and actually I would like to get the rights to Duke fame so and then put a show to put a show together i mean i have social media on there as do fame but i actually through the writers guild and, and whatnot i have to get permission to actually i am duke fame in the movie mm -hmm. but i could actually take that character's name and then do something with it if i wanted to like i would love to put a, sh a kind of a comedy rock show together yeah. of duke fame you know well, since Howard, yeah. since your manager um, Howard has passed away, unfortunately, um, I wouldn't mind being your manager, Duke. Oh yeah, It'd be great. <laughs> so how about we say this? I want to be in Spinal Tap too, Duke Fame. Why don't you say that? I want to be in Spinal Tap too. Is Duke Fame is All still right. alive? All right. Hey, this is how, hey, this is how people notice things. And I know that you're friends with uh, Harry and all those people, but I mean, you just can't uh, demand, but you were an int integral part of that. I remember that movie and I haven't seen it uh, for, I don't know, six or seven months, but you walked in. You know, it's hotel. such a small part, but people, you know, for some reason, you know, remember I had said a few more lines, but uh, it was interesting because I had been on the gong show. I had a record out in 1972. And it was with Mickey Dolan's sister. And it was called Follow Me. And it was on Bell Records. Snuff Garrett, who produced Liza Minnelli and Sonny and Cher and Fats Domino. He's produ he produced a whole lot of different people. And um, anyways, the record was 22 with a bullet. And it was released in 1972. And... Um, I was doing an interview with uh, with a guy, and he said, I, I have your record. I have, and I never speak of that record, uh, you know, because it was so long ago. But, um, you know, it uh, was a trip doing that when I was 17 years old. And I don't know where I'm going with this, but uh, <laughs> I think it had something like to spinal relate to Spinal <laughs> Tap. But uh, I... Uh, I did this record, and uh, uh, Vicki Lawrence came out with That's the Night That the Lights Went Out in Georgia. And then they went ahead and shelved my record that was 22 with a bullet. But I was doing an interview with a guy in New Jersey, and he goes, I got your first promo record. And I went, you're kidding, follow me? And he goes, oh, yeah, I've got it. And uh, I said, well... He says, I'll trade you some, I'll trade you the 45 for some of your new stuff. And so I sent him some new stuff. He sent me the 45. Then, it, then another guy sent me an MP3 I was doing an M interview with because I couldn't listen to the record. And then a friend of mine ended up giving me a turntable who had started uh, the DJ Gemini for the, okay. those DJs mm -hmm. uh, back when uh, the rap stuff and the skittle skittle stuff on the records were were happening mm -hmm. anyways he finally we're good friends alan sent me a, a a turntable which is beautiful and then someone sent me the the 45 to stars which was interesting i didn't even know they made a 45 of stars but um yeah someone sent me that too which was kind of cool and uh you know, because uh, it's really interesting on the picture of the album. Mm -hmm. uh, on the backs or on the front side, it's everybody's in that picture, but me and I think Jimmy Bain is not in that picture. And they they took other pictures because I have another picture. Me and Jimmy were in the bathroom. I think we were drinking ber uh, Jim Beam and Coke. Yeah, let's God clarify why. Let's clarify why why you two were in the bathroom. Okay. Uh, we were drinking uh, Jim Beam and, uh, <laughs> and Coke. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know what? It's kind of like I want to hear that rather than you just – so me and Jimmy Bain were in the bathroom. Anyways. <laughs> but uh, anyways, you know, but since my, my, my whole life, is uh, since I did Spinal Tap, it's been a bit of Spinal Tap. You know, going to gigs, uh, Rough Cut being on tour. We called it Lost in America. We were on tour with Alcatraz on the same bus. And we were doing a flip-flop tour. One band would headline. The next band would, okay. you know, would open. Well, the promoters want alphabetical order. So A went before R. So every time we showed up at a gig, the drummer would go, man, I thought we were headlining tonight. <laughs> no, yeah. no, it didn't matter. Wind me up, whatever. It didn't really matter. We were all on the same bus. But we, the bus driver never, once he found the gig, he could never find the hotel. When he found the hotel, he could never find the gig. So uh, it, it was, it, we called it Lost in America, and it was Spinal Tap to the T. And uh, actually parked the bus during Thanksgiving in New York on the street. And they ransacked it. They're lucky. He's lucky they didn't leave it on jacks because they took everything out of the bus. <laughs> we had to finish the tour with no games or TVs or anything in the bus because they ransacked that bus. Wow. And, uh, yeah, it, but it was Spinal Tap the whole time. It just seemed like it, you know, one night in um, Buffalo, New York. I come walking out the back door. It rained, went to ice. I got a girl on each hand, you know, and I go flying off the loading dock, which was like about <laughs> six feet above the ground, hit the ground. Did you bring the girls down with you? Almost broke my nose. Thank God. It's still a little bent. Uh, and uh, popped up like nothing happened. Everybody goes, are you okay? And I go, yeah, I got on the bus and you can see a silhouette of me just going back and forth. Like, oh, my hands, you know. <laughs> well, it's like being on but, camera. Uh, you have to play it, right? Oh, man, I swear. So, you know, it's been, uh, Spinal Tap has been part of my life since I've done it, actually. Uh, I've lived it. I think every, to some extent, I think every rock musician has experienced Spinal Tap. I think that's yeah, why it's, that's why it's such an iconic part of rock and roll. And those guys tapped into something that, uh, that really happens to rock guys, you know. Just Hush. like um, um, in the movie, um, I think that guy from the uh, hey! military base. Oh, that's my dogs in the background. Hey, guys. It's okay. It's a tap I, moment. I've got four dogs. I feel like Ben Hur when I walk them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's enough. But it's like in the two movie from where South the Korea that are Labradors that from a meat market. Then I got a Padanko from Spain. And then I have a female that's part coyote from Pahrump. <laughs> and we named her after Deadwood's Trixie, the prostitute. <laughs> Pahrump, Nevada. I, yeah, I that's, that's right. Pahrump. That's where all the whorehouses are. <laughs> is that right? Well, is, that's where Art Bell used to broadcast his show. Yeah, the uh, actually, uh, there was a show in... Uh, on HBO, HBO called the uh, Bunny, the Bunny Farm. Really? I think that's what it was called. And uh, Dennis Hoff was the owner of that, and um, he actually won the election. But ha uh, back before COVID, just before COVID, he won the election in Pahrump and died of a heart attack. <laughs> I can see why he died of a heart attack when you watch that show. You know, the Bunny Ranch. I think that's what it was called, the Bunny Ranch, not the Bunny Farm. The Bunny Ranch with Dennis Hoff. And, uh, you know, it was out of Pahrump. And he actually won the election uh, right before, you know, COVID hit. And he had a heart attack. Well, I can see why he had a heart attack. Probably taking too much Viagra with all those women in his uh well, there's, there's a lot of interesting people that have gone into politics with kind of an interesting background. Look at Jerry Springer. He was the oh, I know. Cincinnati. I'm thinking about going and uh, going around for mayor. 
Danny Coker keeps calling me the mayor of Las Vegas. So, but uh, actually the mayor of Las Vegas actually only runs downtown. The governor of Las Vegas runs the strip. So whatever. Really? Yeah. That's really interesting because the governor, like a, to be honest with you, is that like a kind of a, and I'm, I'm just saying, does that have anything to do with maybe some organized? Because that's an interesting um, way. Well, of it's the it, it's 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 political. It's politically organized. It's not yeah. uh, mob organized. The mob still probably uh, own all of the uh, trash, yeah, like they do in New York. You know. Um, the people that pick up your trash, I think that the mob still are involved in, in them. Actually, I think the city was better off when the mob owned it than, than it went to public and it's now it's corporate because corporate yeah. really doesn't care about people. So you know, they don't. They, they look at numbers and that's all they care about. And Same when the mob went, ran this town, they, it was all about entertainment. My mm -hmm. wife's grandfather was an architect for Ben Siegel when he wow. did the flamingo. So her family's been here since 1944. And, um, you know, they, they, he did the, uh, the mint, which is now Binion's. He did a lot of schools here, uh, banks. Uh, he did a lot of, he did a lot of stuff. He was, a, 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 an architect that they brought in from Pasadena because they needed a legitimate architect when they were putting up the flamingo bugsy you know and actually they uh, all had dinner the night that they took bugsy to mccarran airport and he flew to california and that's night the mob uh, uh took him out so uh they had dinner with virginia hill and um, bugsy and dropped him off at mccarran and um, so you're, you're it's a right. shame that they don't they don't keep they tore down his penthouse uh, it's a shame that they don't keep some of the history here. Mm -hmm. We have the neon uh, graveyard, which is a graveyard of all the neons that were in Vegas at one time. But uh, it's a shame that they don't keep a little bit of the history um, wow. of how this city was built. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's growing like crazy now with the sphere. Yeah. Uh, anybody that performs inside the uh, the sphere, they'll be able to see it on the outside. Uh, flying into Las Vegas, who knows what you'll be looking at? You might be looking at the planet, or you might be looking at the guys on the put the flag on the moon, and uh, or yeah. anything. It's it's amazing. It's a, it's sort of actually the sphere is set up to where if they have a convention, there are sections of the speakers are in this uh, are are in the seats, so no matter where you sit in that auditorium, you too is supposed to open it. You'll be able to hear the band perfectly, like a record, in in your in your seat. And for conventions, people will be able to have translation. So if they're speaking in English and someone's from Germany in a certain section, mm -hmm. they'll be able to understand it translated to them in German wow. or Japanese. It's pretty, pretty in, impressive uh, what they've uh, done with this. I guess Madison Square Garden from New York is involved with these, this investment on this. What, but what I believe they're going to put uh, one in the UK. What is it supposed to open uh, it's going to open soon this year. They worked all the way through COVID, of course, and so um, YouTube? built it. So YouTube, <laughs> so YouTube is going. YouTube is going to open the open it. Wow. They're actually uh, testing it right now, doing things. There, you can go on YouTube and look up the Sphere in Las Vegas and see some of the things that they're. You know, like the other night they were having spiral things going around on it, green. You know. Mm -hmm. It can be very, uh, <laughs> you know, distracting uh, yeah. with the stuff. Like you could be flying in and you could see the earth, you know, from the plane. It can, it can portray anything on the sphere at once. That is and amazing. I think it has 7,000 seats, uh, maybe more. But um, 
That's amazing. Uh, it should be an interesting uh, venue to play to be able to have that uh, that technology to produce the sound in your seat. Yeah. You know, the I subwoofer, that, they, I mean, everything. You feel, you know, like some of those Disney uh, uh, rides where you, you know, you can feel the rumble in your seat. And yeah. I think in the Michael Jackson show that they had in Disneyland uh, that you could actually hear the music in the seat. I'm not sure. It's been so long since I've been to Disneyland. The last time I took my granddaughter, she's 21 now, and I took her when she was 10. So You still, you still must be paying that off, eh, Paul? Uh, let me tell you. <laughs> Disneyland. Yeah, I, I put her in a stroller. She says, I'm too big for that, Grandpa. I says, no, <laughs> trust me, you're going to want this at the end of the day. And sure enough, she got into it. And it was it was it was cool because it was combative with all of the other people that had their kids in, you know, the strollers because they were running over my feet left and right. You know, so is so, there like a uh, discount if you got uh, somebody in a stroller so you could theoretically put a 21 year old in a stroller and save five grand uh, on entry? Well, no, you have to you have to go with the uh, someone that large. You'll have to go with the uh, wheelchair. You know, you'll have to go in there and say you have an issue with. But what's great about it is, is with the wheelchair thing is you get right at the front of the line. They put you on the ride right away. Hey, it so. deals a deal, right? It's like Bobby Kimball used to say, you know, I need to be wheeled up to the plane. You know what? <laughs> and, you know what? and I took that from him, too. I've actually, uh, one time, uh, we did a show in, uh, I think it was Cancun, and I decided uh, I wanted to do the wheelchair thing, right? It was after Bobby told me he did it. And I, so they stick me in a line, and I'm in, I'm in the, tail end of World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, and there's this rock guy that's, that could have went to Vietnam. My draft card was 360. So I had friends going to Nam, and I, I didn't have to go. I've got friends that got uh, Agent Orange and Mesothelioma and that I went to school with, and you know, God just didn't want me to go to Vietnam. And, and I even got to a point where I was thinking about enlisting. And well, you, thank God I didn't because I wouldn't be maybe here or I wouldn't even be the person I am. I think God put me here for a different reason. Right. And uh, I'm actually looking forward to doing like a gospel record. Um, nice. Elvis did one. was probably his largest uh, selling record ever. When he did it. do some old gospel, but do some really new stuff that's out there. I've uh, I, I was turned on to this song, the the goodness of God, which is really cool. It's a very cool song, and um, it's uh, the lyrics of it are really cool. And 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 and, and it's it's a I'd want a gospel choir singing it with me, and and uh, and I like to do some old ones, you know. Uh, amazing grace and just right. some great old good gospel songs so some, some of the ones that elvis did yeah. i just think it would be it's good for your spirit to be grounded right. spiritually you know yeah. seems like we've lost our way when it comes to that <laughs> we a lot of people you know and uh religion's a little different than spirituality spirituality is getting in contact with the source yeah Religion seems like it's caused a lot of conflicts in the world yeah. because of them trying to enforce what they believe on to someone when really Christ was a rebel. Mm -hmm. You know, they the religion, Pharisees, Jewish, and, you know, the emperor or the governor pilot of the time that was running that Jerusalem in the Middle East, you know, was forced to... Uh, do what the people wanted and, and it was more. religion he was pre he was telling everybody that it seems like the pharisees are and and the, that the levites are the ones who are born into being rabbis out of the 12 tribes of israel and they become 
high priests when they're brought into the world automatically. Right. And that 50, they step down. So these guys, you know, that they, they did they wanted Christ out of the way because he was he was teaching they have hundreds of laws and he was teaching ten, you know, and the main one was love. Right. So I think we need just we just need a little bit more love, peace and happiness in the world. And um there's a great album out there that everybody should check out. It's the Chambers Brothers live at the Fillmore East. And it's called Love, Peace, and Happiness. And they do a song called Love, Peace, and Happiness. It's about eight minutes long. It was only recorded live at the Fillmore East. They never did a, another version. The, on that record is People Get Ready, Wade in the Water. Mm -hmm. And in in time, that was their big hit. Uh, and but um, love, peace, and happiness is is, is is like a bum bum dum. Bum. I'll try to find it. It's it's a really cool. It's a, people should check it out. It's a really cool, cool track. And I just think uh, I don't know what happened, but we had a a, a movement in the sixties and seventies that was all about love and peace yeah. and happiness. And and it seems like people have lost their way there. Well, it seems like there's a lot of, uh, since we have social media, people can spew it. a lot of hate without, <laughs> you know, any kind of repercussions. And uh, I just want to get, let everybody know that they, they definitely need to check out that and spread a little bit more love in the world. Right on, right on. Um, I won't keep you much longer, um, but I do have, holy geez, you sent me on in my mind, I'm thinking when you mentioned the wheelchair thing about uh, Disneyland, yeah. wouldn't this be great? And I'm hoping maybe, maybe I'll get lucky and somebody watches my little idea. With the Spinal Tap movie, wouldn't it be interesting to have pictures of video of all the three guys, you know, Harry, Shear, Christopher, uh, Michael, and they're all talking. All you can see is their upper body. And they're saying, yeah, you got to go in there. You got to get along. We want to make some money. And then they all do it. The next scene you see is they're all being wheelchaired in. Yeah, that would be really good. You know, when they might steal that idea. Well, you know, steal it, I won't that, that, that they get wheeled up to, you know, so they can board. Yeah. You know, they're not, they're, they're all stage. flying coach, right? They're flying coach. And they have to, they want to get on the plane first so they can put their guitar up up above and they're they're carry on you know so that would be brilliant and then and then the big <laughs> the, the big production before the show starts everybody's waiting for them and then they have all these they, their nurses wheel them up to the mics yeah oh no that would be great you know oh, that would be great and one guy doesn't make it up harry Shear, right <laughs> like he got locked in the pod yeah, yeah, His yeah. His nurse yeah. doesn't show up, so he's wheeling himself well, well, up to the Well, mic. what happens is, <laughs> what I would say is, the nurse keeps pushing and it doesn't work, but he's got the fucking brakes on the wheelchair. Uh, right. Well, there you go. There you go. And they're they're waiting to come on after me at the Normo Dome. There We're you playing go. the Normo <laughs> Dome again. Dome. And, yeah, and they're going to come up and they're going to follow me. I go out with a cane, my little cane, Ramo. And uh, in fact, I got him here. I'll show you what he looks like. I perform with him. Let me get him. Yeah. This is my buddy. <laughs> A friend of mine gave me this, and then he gave me some. Um, there was Swarsky crystals, so I perform with this guy. He's known as Remo or Ramo. Remo is the guy who gave them to me, but I, I called him Remo, and they've got my signature is on here, right there. Oh, yeah. And we we auction these off to uh, help homeless veterans. Oh, they went up to Michael Goddard, the uh, artist, paid twelve hundred or $1,800 for one of these. And, and anyways, um, we... Uh, I lost you. Where are you? I think you just got to tap the screen. Ah, uh, this fucking guy calling me. Get out of here. Maybe it's your manager. Sorry, I can't talk right now. There we go. I'm back. Okay. There we go. 
Yeah, my phone's attached to everything. So, anyways, he also made. So we we auctioned these off for homeless vets and rescue dogs. So I've rescued my wife. That's my wife's passion, and I support her on it. We've got two Labradors, Priscilla and Presley from South Korea, that were on a meat farm. Mm -hmm. So I got all. We got all of the Las Vegas entertainers together. And with Phil Susan and Andrew Freeman from Last in Line, who are playing tonight, we performed in acoustically and raised twenty five thousand dollars and saved a hundred dogs and closed down two farms. And then I have another dog that's from Spain. And then we had one pass away during uh, two that passed away during COVID. Elvis oh. was a Labrador, and Dio, Dio was a Pedanco from Spain. He was only eight years old. So this. This little guy right here, we auction him off. I perform on stage with him. Um, he's been all around the world. And uh, then he made me uh, and my wife uh, umbrellas. Mine's, when you open it up, it's red and black zebra, but it has the head like this. And hers wow. is black and white with black eyes. These are red eyes. He, That's he wild, uh, discontinued these. But he's he's such a great guy. You can look up his stuff. My glasses are his frames. Uh, I've got like probably six pair of prescription glasses. I've got mirrored ones that are rose colored, blue ones. But he just uh, he does male accessories, belts, glasses, sunglasses, uh, socks. His socks are amazing. Canes, he's got all kinds of different canes, umbrellas, and he's out of Arizona, and you can go and find him at R-E-M-O Tulliani, T-U-L-L-I-N-I, at uh, uh, dot com. And he is uh, some, you know, someone to support. He's a good guy. He's a really good human being. Right. And um, there's there's hardly that many great human beings out there anymore, you know. Yeah. Over here, you can see there's raiding the rock vault. There's me and Macaulay. Uh, I don't know what's in. Oh, <laughs> my teeter, table? my teeter thing is in the way. There's a picture up here of Benny Paul and me. Yep, right there. And then there's Ronnie James Dio and and me. And over here we've got Leon Spinks knocking out. Um, uh, Muhammad Ali, and then there's a platinum record back there of, nice. of songs. And then up here, there's the uh, Carmine and Venny and myself, and then there's one with my wife in between. And then that's with my wife with Greg Almond and Alan Woody wow. from um, basically uh, the Almond Brothers, and um, we went to see them at the Greek Theater. And then it, my wife was wearing this white Indian coat, right? White yeah. chamois with beads all over it. They thought mm -hmm. she was Cher. And they oh, thought nice. I was James Christensen. I couldn't believe it. We we walked from backstage out at the Greek theater, watching the Almond Brothers. Because, you know, you can go get a beer, go to the bathroom, and they're still playing the same song. They're jamming still, you know, <laughs> on yeah. Whipping Post or whatever it might be. Or Jessica. And then, you know, People, you could hear people going, oh, there's James Christensen and Cher. And actually, when Greg walked out of the dressing room after the show, he saw my wife and went, oh, my God, my ex is here. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a funny moment. But um, anyways, I just wanted to say thank you for having me on and um, thank all my fans and uh, keep rocking and check out the new King Cobra. Yep. And uh, those other records, Blue Dahlia with uh, Tracy G, and um, the Rough Cut Three. The, I'll put all the links below in the description box, uh, Paul, because I get a feeling people are going to watch this interview from the beginning to the end because there's so much good information in here. Um, before I forget, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? <laughs> unsubscribe. Sub subscribe. Subscribe. Everybody do as the great Duke Fame says and subscribe to the channel for this great interview. That's right. And uh, I got a good feeling you're going to make appearance in uh, Spinal Tap 2. 
And um, when you do talk to those cats, if they do use my wheelchair thing, just uh, I just want a royalty, like just a guitar pick. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm going to tell them that idea. I think it's a great idea. I think that somebody's probably going to share this with them. They're going to they're going to maybe see it and add it to uh, to what they're doing. If they're I don't know if they're in filming yet or what the deal is, but I've got somebody that reached out to me who's into the uh, movie who's an agent, you know, you have to have an agent when you're an actor, mm. not a, as much as a manager. So I've got an agent working on it and uh, we'll see what happens. And maybe I'll reach out myself and, and then even share that idea with them, <laughs> you know, but listen, it's been a slice of heaven, my brother. And uh, let's stay in touch. I'll, uh, I'll try to hook you up with Carlos to do an interview. Oh, I did one with him uh, about a month, about two months ago. Oh, good, good. Yeah, awesome. that's actually uh, that one went viral. So I'll uh, I'll maybe send it to you because we had some good laughs in it. But uh, yeah, once again, Paul, you've been a pleasure. I've talked to you a few times before. You're always grace graceful and gracious to answer any uh, questions or um, requests I have of you. And man, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a blast. Well, listen, stay safe on the high seas, brother. Yeah, I got to I'm almost there. <laughs> I love it. I'll talk to you later, right? God bless. Take care.